Good morning. Please pray with me. Righteous Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us again. I ask that you bless this church and the, our community of faith and watch over all of our parishioners and also those who are sick. We thank you for all of your many blessings. Amen. We have a we have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, you will see up on the screen that Sarah Masur is doing a um, Bible study. If you, <laughs> if you would like to join that, uh, there's a, her name and, and email address on the screen, and also there is a sign up in the back of the room. <clears throat> also, um, we have the, there are two boxes in the back. You will notice that one of them is for the food bank and one of them is for the nest. The mission committee has put these out all year long. Last year we did not do any food drives for the, for the food bank, the Lincoln County Food Bank. And so we thought this was a good opportunity put to have that, um, have that on the way. Also, um, there are lists on both boxes on what is needed for both of those places. And the last thing on the back, there is a sign-up sheet for altar flowers if you would like to do that. And I have a quick announcement this week. Um, this week is going to be Raito's birthday, right? Yeah. Raito, that's what I said, yeah. And so Dan thought it would be nice with all of our nice new technology if we sang her happy birthday and sent it to her um, for her birthday. Can we do that, church? So I'm going to ask you to stand up and face this camera. You can actually see yourself on TV, possibly. Let's sing happy birthday. standing for our call to worship. I lay down and sleep. I wake again for the Lord. I am not afraid of 10,000 people who have set themselves against me on every side. You shall break them with a Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord, your blessing be upon your people. Please remain standing for the opening hymn. <laughs>
220 Junction Avenue to the church, or if you're watching online, you can go to rudosocumc.org backslash giving. So just thank you for your support and continued financial support. We ended 2020 on a great note, and let's continue it in 2021. Amen? Amen. So typically, what we had done pre-COVID, um, we're trying to get back to life before COVID as much as we possibly can, is we would have a mission moment, and it, we didn't know it was going to work out this way, so we're going to do it this weekend as Nancy on video as opposed to Nancy in person, so you'll get a double dose of Nancy today. <laughs> but before we do that, let me pray over God's goodness in our lives. Father, I thank you so much for all that you have given for sending your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to live and walk and breathe and heal and raise the dead and be raised himself. To the continual outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us. And I pray that you would just help us to receive more and more of you each and every day of our lives. And I ask that as we have more of you in our life, that we would just turn around and from the overflow of your spirit, allow us to give for you so that your name shall be glorified, your kingdom shall be expanded. We ask these things in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So I think we have a video from Nancy now. Good morning. My name is Nancy Clark, and I'm chair of the Mission Committee. We would like to give everyone an update on an ongoing mission that was able to continue through 2020. For those of you who may not know, the Sunshine Dental Program began in late 2019 when a generous donor asked the church to help administer funds for the purpose of providing needed dental care to Rio Dosa children. 11 children have either received braces or other necessary dental services since March of 2020, even with the COVID shutdowns. Nearly $40,000 was spent. Four additional children will begin services within the upcoming month. We have been blessed with another gift from the donor and will be able to continue this program. This month, the committee, with a suggestion and help from the Spiritual Formation Group, will be writing personal thank yous on CUMC note cards and inserting a $10 gift card for approximately 220 Riadosa teachers. These teachers have been on the front lines with our family's children and need love and support from all of us. In the near future, the committee will be sharing with the congregation several new projects that we are beginning to work on. As Dustin has said, we want our community to experience the love of Christ Jesus just as we do. Thank you. So thank you, Nancy, and thank you for all of those that continue to support this congregation. As you can see, we're not just spending it on fancy buildings, but we're trying to impact the community for the goodness of God and who he is. So let us stand and sing the doxology. sing my Jesus I love thee
again, and in case y'all forgot, I have been in school the last couple of weeks, and so we have a guest preacher this morning, so I just want to introduce my district superintendent, Ernie Vineyard, if you haven't met him. Say hi, Ernie, and his wife, Corey. And he will do an amazing job preaching, and if he doesn't, he will anyway. Um, Y'all all know it's a big week in our nation this week, so I want to pray over those things because we do know that two former Texas Tech quarterbacks are playing each other today in the playoffs. So, and if you look at my socks later, I may or may not be supporting one of them over the other one who left and went to that other school in that other state. But we all know on Wednesday there will be a transition of power, and even on BBC, the headlines are not positive towards our nation. I just wanted to remind us before we enter the pastoral prayer of a word from Paul from Romans chapter 13. He says, let every person be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those authorities that exist have been instituted by God. And you have to remember that Paul wrote this to the church in Rome, who just a few years after Paul wrote this would be ruled by the emperor Nero, who would use Christians as nightlights in his garden. He would literally put... Christians in his garden instead of a flame at night so that he could see as he walked around and other atrocities. And so, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I do not anticipate any of our American governing authorities to catch us on fire in the next near future. I could be wrong, but if so, it's been done before, and Paul still says that we need to be subject to them. So I'm going to pray for our transition, pray for our leadership, and pray for our congregation as we continue to move forward as well. Let us go to God. Father, I thank you for who you are again and again. I thank you for allowing us to live in this wonderful nation where we are free to worship you, where we don't have to hide in small homes or basements like brothers and sisters in China, that we don't have to fear persecution and death like our brothers and sisters in Iran, but that we can gather here this morning in freedom and in joy and worship you with all that we have and all that we are. And so we pray this week as our government transitions power. I ask that you would allow a peace to come upon a nation that can come only from you. I pray that we remember the words of Chronicles that we, your people, should turn to you. That we should repent of our sins for trusting in the power that's in Washington, D.C. and not trusting enough in your power, Lord. And we pray that this nation would truly be united because you are the Lord over all. And so God, in the midst of the chaos that has been going on in the world the last 18 months, allow us to continue to know that you are the sovereign God, the ruler of the universe, and that your son, Jesus Christ, is still sitting at your right hand, and that your spirit still empowers us this day and each day. So give us wisdom, give us peace, and give us unity in these times. And it's during this time that we come to you as your children, lifting up those needs that we have now before you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. 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 Lord, hear our prayers.
our prayers. So, Father, we pray this and all things, praying the prayer that you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from the true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in con the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crushed under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds. who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the word to come. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord, and Eli, the word of the Lord was rare in those days, visions were not widespread. In that time, Eli, whose eyesight was, had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the, in the, temple of the Lord. <laughs> in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. 
Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli again and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood <coughs> there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Is it working? All right. Dustin said, uh, you're going to hear a really good sermon. And I always say that one of the blessings of having your district superintendent come preach is it really makes your congregation appreciate you <laughs> so much more. So I think that's my primary role. But um, no, I think I, I am proud and glad to be here. Um, we love coming to Rio Doso. We like hanging out with you folks. Um, and it's nice to come here and not have to do a charge conference. So, yeah. Yeah. Will you pray with me? Oh, gracious God. It is good to be in your house. It's good to be in this fellowship. And Lord, um, I just pray for this congregation and those who are here in this place, those who are at home. Lord, by your spirit, unite us. And Lord, I also thank you so much for your holy scriptures, for this word about your prophet Samuel. And Lord, may it be more than just words about something that happened a long time ago. But Lord, may this be your living word for us gathered here today. And so Lord, may we hear from you Pour your spirit out on us gathered here so that um, your word might be heard, it might be proclaimed, and Lord, we might take it to heart. And Lord, use me, yes, even me, that the words I speak glorify you and benefit your church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is such a uh, wonderful story. Uh, it's about God's calling of the prophet Samuel. And to really know what's going on here, we do need a little background. Um, just in the two, verse, two chapters prior to this, Samuel's mother, Hannah, had been unable to have children. And she had made a promise to God that if God gave her a son, that she would give that son to the Lord. And he would be a Nazarite. Now, um, a Nazarite was a man who was consecrated to God. Would not drink any alcohol, nor would he cut his hair, would not come in any physical contact with the dead. Um, any of you remember another Nazarite in the Bible? Um, that's what Samson was as well. Now, usually, a Nazarite vow was for a period of time. Um, but in this case, it sounds like Hannah's vow for Samuel was for life. And so when Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to Samuel, 
she followed through with that promise. After Samuel was weaned, she took him to the synagogue and left him there to be raised by Eli, the priest. Now, in this story, we're not told exactly how old Samuel is, only that he grew in stature with the Lord and the people and that he ministered under Eli. And my best guess, he was probably in his early teens, maybe 12, 13 years old. I'm not sure. And so he was lying in what they called the very inner chamber. They said the temple, but the temple as we know of it was not built yet. So this was in the synagogue. But he was in the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, the place where it was believed that God resided. And sometime during that night, when the lamp of the Lord was still burning, Samuel hears a voice. Samuel. Samuel. Of course, he believes it's Eli. And he goes to Eli, and Eli says, it's not me. Go to bed. And he hears it again and goes to Eli. And on the third time this happens, Eli realize, realizes that it is God calling. And he says, if you hear this again, answer, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And Samuel hears the voice again and responds, and a prophet of God is called. <clears throat> you know, a thing that really jumped out to me as I'm reading this passage is not God's call. It's not the fact that the boy, Samuel, is the one called. Not the fact that Eli recognizes who is calling but in the very first verse there's a statement and it says the word of the Lord was rare in those days Isn't that interesting the word of the Lord was rare in those days you know up to this point in the scriptures the Bible is full of accounts of people hearing the word of God and acting on it. It's the basis of most of the Old Testament. And then here in the first in 1 Samuel, we read the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Now I know there's some people who might take comfort in that. Good. People weren't hearing from the Lord then either. You know, I don't find it comforting. Then or now, there must have been a reason that the word of God was rare in those days. Now, Samuel was at Shiloh, uh, one of the holy places in Israel, and people would come to Shiloh from miles around to worship and make their sacrifices to God. Now, Eli was the priest in Shiloh. He was a holy man, but he had some problems. And chief among those problems were his sons. His sons were not the most godly of men. And one of the things that they were doing was stealing the meat that the people brought to sacrifice to God. Now, there were laws in Leviticus, according to 1 Samuel, um, they weren't following those rules. In fact, they would even take the meat when it was raw, when the fat had not even burn, been burnt off yet. And that was clear in Leviticus, that that was the role of the priest to make sure. And Samuel handled it, I mean, Eli handled it by basically saying to his sons, 
Now, boys, you know that's not nice. You shouldn't do it. God was done with Eli and Eli's sons. So the word of the Lord would be rare for them. And the people were quite content to leave the godly communication up to the priests. So if the priests were not hearing from God, then the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And some would say the word of the Lord is rare in these days. Unfortunately, I think that's true. But the word of the Lord is not rare because of God. The word of the Lord is rare because of us. And I would say the majority of us, and I mean us, myself included, really don't take enough time to listen for God's voice. We're too busy. And our heads are too full of stuff to hear what God has to say. In fact, some of us are maybe too busy consider doing what we consider God's work and even studying in scripture, even praying to hear from God. How many of you during your prayer time, your time of prayer, have an extended period of listening. I can tell you if I didn't get up real early and take time to be my, myself, it would never happen. To be honest, most of the time it still doesn't happen. You know, I admire... Um, and appreciate people so much who truly hear from God. And notice I say truly hear from God. Because I'm sure, as I have, as I'm sure some of you have been, some people, they don't have a thought without saying, you know, God told me. And I just go, I don't think God told you that. <laughs> You know, one of the things that keeps us from hearing the word of the Lord is um, this 21st century information overload. And our constant need for noise. Maybe that's why many of you came to Ruidoso, so you could get away from that noise. And I know people who never do anything in silence. I mean, have you gone out into the woods um, to go camping or whatever, and then somebody camps right by you, and the first thing they do is turn on their boombox? <laughs> it's a little frustrating. Remember how it was that Elijah heard God after fleeing from Jezebel, it was in the silence. And where was Moses when God got his attention? He was out in the wilderness tending sheep. And I don't think he had an iPod. What did Jesus do to constantly stay in touch with the Father? He went off by himself to pray. And I would say a lot of that time was listening for his Father's voice. And sometimes I wonder if we stay that busy, maybe so we won't hear from God. Or we just tune him out. How many of you can sit in the same room with your spouse? And when he or she speaks to you, they might as well be speaking to the walls around you. Okay, guys, admit it. 
Ladies, admit it. How about you kids? Do you ever tune your parents out? <laughs> you know, parents, what do your kids have to do to get your attention? Sometimes it works to call you by your first name because you typically will listen to that. And the sad truth is we're capable of, capable of doing the same thing to God. And I think the reason, one of the reasons we're capable of turning God out is we might be afraid to hear what he has to say. You know, read through your Bible and people who hear from God. And one thing that is in common through it all, their lives are typically not the same after they hear from God. And I know God wants to communicate with us. He has done everything to make it happen except force us to listen. He has even made the word, Jesus, to live in us by the Holy Spirit. And one of the big differences between the Old Testament people and us is that God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Spirit dwells in us. And we don't have to look for an external voice. If we have given ourselves to Christ, he is in us. He promised that. But we do have to listen. And not only that, have to have a desire to listen. Okay, so what do we do? How about nothing? Don't you love it? The preacher come up here and say, don't do anything. Or actually, how about less than we're doing? Quiet things down a bit. Turn off the noise and listen. You, Samuel was in the core of the synagogue, in the Holy of Holies, when he heard from God, in a place by himself. And sometimes we have to get by ourselves and shut things off. And then just pray, God, I long to hear from you. If you haven't yet, give your life to Christ. And receive the gift of his Holy Spirit. That sounds simple, doesn't it? But you know what? Faith is pretty simple. If it wasn't, I could probably never grasp it. Open your heart up to God. Just borrow those words that Eli said to, to speak for Samuel. Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then listen. Because God wants to communicate with every single one of you. We pray. Gracious, loving God, it is good to know that, yes, Samuel was a prophet. He did some amazing things. He was so faithful. But by the gift of your son Jesus and the gift of your Holy Spirit, he has nothing that we don't have. That your spirit has been given for us. And you long to speak with us. So Lord, may we have a desire to hear from you. Lord, place that in our hearts. And may we say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Let us stand to sing our closing song, Forth in Thy Name.
Now may you go from this place knowing that God does not let you leave alone. God goes with you, accompanies with you, with his spirit in you. So go, listen, and do in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. for watching this live stream. Through it, I pray that God moves in your life and speaks to you. And know that I long to hear from you. I want to know who is watching these and how I can pray for you and how I, as a pastor of this church, can help you. Whether you live here in Rudoso, Alto, the Downs, or you live in Florida or in Japan, wherever you're watching this from, know that I am praying that God is moving in your life and I want to be here to help you. 